विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो हमारिए नजर समीपे रहो हमारिए घनश्याम महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our Puja Bad Guruji, Puja Bhagatji, Puja Neo Bhagat, and all of you devotees, Jai Swaminare. You know, in this world, when we want to learn anything, whether it's knowledge, or a skill, or a technique, we need a teacher. For example, if we want to learn some chemistry equations, we need a chem teacher. If we want to learn geometry, scaling isosceles triangles, solving Pythagorean's theorem, we need a teacher who teaches geometry. If we want to learn a skill, suppose you want to learn how to play basketball need a basketball coach if you want to learn how to play tennis you need a tennis coach meaning in this world each and every skill technique knowledge anything that you do not know you cannot learn by yourself and be perfect or not perfect but you can be successful at it you need a teacher to guide you to help you out in order to make that skill or make that knowledge firm in the same exact manner in our religious world all of you probably know but to refortify it you need a teacher which is called a guru a spiritual master without such a spiritual master how can we strengthen our spirituality? How can we strengthen our dharma bhakti gnana vairagya? How can we strengthen our religious force to engage with Maharaj constantly throughout our day? Well, I want to take you back in time today. In the time of even a story beyond Maharaj's time even beyond 230 years, even beyond 500 or 1,000 years. This is an ancient story which will teach all of us how our Guru Bhakti should be, how we should follow our Guru so that with his each and every Agna, each and every command, we'd be able to sufficiently carry it out in order to attain what we're here to attain. It's a story of Satyakam Jabali. I'm sure many of you have heard about it, but probably don't know about the whole story of how he became such a notarized character in history. Well, there was a Rishi, Rishi named Gautam. A small boy named Satyakam came to his ashram. The boy bowed down and said, Guru, I want to learn Brahmvidya. Meaning, Brahmvidya is the knowledge of oneself being the soul, as well as the knowledge of God, His greatness. Well, at first, Gautam Rushi was kind of appalled that who is this boy? Why is he coming up to me and asking me such question? This Rushi did possess, possess such gnan, but obviously, this gnan is so valuable, so important, that it cannot be given to anyone. Gautam Rushi had to test Satyakam's patience, his thirst, his quench to succeed and strive in this Brahmidya gnan. Well, 
he saw a zeal, a kind of intensity in the boy's face. So, he f go ahead and he started to engage with him. After some time, Gautam Rushi accepted him as his sishya, his pupil. After a few days, Gautam Rushi took Satyakam to his ashram, which herded 400 cows. Satyakam saw these 400 cows and was very, very surprised to see such a large number that his guru had taken care of for this much time. Now, Gautam Rushi looked to Satyakam and pointed out that there are 400 cows here. What I want you to do is, I want you to take these 400 cows, get, go out of this ashram, go away, far away, and herd these cows to make them 1,000. Now, let's think about this. Number one, as a guru, imagine how much viswas or trust he must have in Satyakyam that he would be able to take on this task not only that but imagine how much trust he has that Satyakam will not take these 400 cows and go away and not ever come back trust that's number one number two right after trust imagine how that guru uh, Gautam Rishi had a sight in his disciple that he would be able to get the task done vision and number three even after putting this child this small child to such a mere uh, impossible task with his age along with his, you can say, what knowledge would its child have? And giving these cows to him and telling him that raise them to 1,000. Confidence. Gautam Rushi possessed all three of these and so did Satyakam. Due to both of their, you can say, likings, positives, it was a task that was going to be successful. You can just tell right off the bat. You know, in Sadguru Gunatitan Swami's Vato, Swami says, I'll say it in Gujarati and then translate it, that Bayaduchivara Oi E Hajara, meaning those who have the same, uh, you can say, likings or the same uh, mindset, vision. Both of them are compared to 1,000. That's how strong unity is. That's how strong one vision makes two people. In the same exact manner, a guru and shishya relationship between Gautam Rushi and Satyakam proved this task was going to be successful. But even if we know that was going to be successful. How did Satyakam go through the process? That's what we want to see. Because even if he takes on this challenge of 400 cows to 1,000 cows, obviously there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be many, many difficult, you can say, mud holes in the way which are going to obstruct this feet that he wants to obtain of Brahm Gnan, Brahm Vidya but his striving, his force maybe he's not as physical fit but that's not important the importance in spiritual life is how mentally fit you are and our mental status will determine our afterlife in the Vachnamrut, Gadada 1st chapter 14 of Vachnamrut, Marad says, Ante Yamati Sagati. However, your mental status is physically, if one believes that I am going to go to Akshardham, 
Maharaj is Sarvopari. If such a person has strong, strong mindset, then even if his body falls there, right there at that moment, if he has a heart attack or some kind of physical ailment which occurs that he leaves this body, this soul leaves his body, he will go to Akshardham. Why? Because at that point, before his body fell, he had the same mentality, meaning mentality, nothing physical. He had the mentality that I am going to go to Akshardham. Then, Bhagwan will take him to his Akshardham no matter what. Meaning, Bhagwan did not look at how much you can say bhakti he did throughout. Yes, he does look at that. But moreover, his mentality is very, very important. And due to his mentality, that's how his gati, that's how his final destination will be determined. So, Satyagam accepted his Guru's commands. Satyagam did not question, I am too young, how will I do this? I came for Brahmvidya Gnan and you're telling me to herd cows. See, as intelligent people of the world nowadays, as people who are educated, we tend to have intelligence in our mind. We tend to see and experiment those who shouldn't be seen or experimented with. What do I mean? If you have a teacher and he's ready to teach you, but you have questions where you ask him, suppose he has a chemi he's a chemistry teacher and he, expect he accepts you as his student and he's ready to teach you. He's ready to teach you an equation, let's say. When he is about to write on the chalkboard, you stop him. You say, sir, I had a question. He said, sure, why not? Go ahead. And you ask him, are you sure you'll be able to solve this equation and teach me the proper way? What do you think he'll say? First and foremost, he'll think that I accepted you as my pupil, as my, you can say, disciple, not disciple, but as my student. And you are asking me if I would be able to solve this equation? It's not arrogance the teacher is displaying. It's not arrogance more so that the teacher is saying that I am the one who knows. But it's more of a viswas. It's more of a trust that the teacher is looking for in his student. Now, the student or the teacher will never display something where he doesn't know. Because that's just uh, something that will not occur in the world where the teacher is like, yes, I know this. Come on, come with me, come with me. And then the teacher does not know. It won't happen because we live in an intelligent world nowadays. But something that will happen on the other side is that the student will doubt the teacher, which is a mistake on our part. But what we can learn from Satyakam's example is that he did not say, I'm too young. Think about this task. Now this boy is not a herdsman. He does not know how to handle cows. He's a young boy. Another thing, 400 to 1,000. That's again a very, that's very, very difficult task. It's more than double of what he has to achieve in order to please his guru, Gautam Rushi. He did not say I'm young. I'm too young. He did not say that how do how will I do this? Not even a thought like that. He did not even question. And this is the main question which will disturb us. Is that I'm here to learn 
Brahm Vidya and why are you telling me or asking me to herd cows? Nothing. In the Vachanamrut, Kadrata middle chapter 27th, Sri Jimarad says, Therefore, one who possess one who wishes to attain liberation should do whatever pleases the great Satpurush. Liberation should do whatever, whatever meaning anything and everything, whatever includes herding 400 to 1,000 cows, whatever includes not sleeping at the night time, not sleeping at the day and working night and day, whatever means not looking at one's physical body and keeping a mental fit body to finish the task. These are Bhagwan's words. According to our Puja Guruji, this is Gunatit Gnan. Gunatit Gnan means knowledge which is beyond Rajagun, Tamogun and Satogun. Knowledge which is purely all of Bhagwan in, in Akshar Brahm. This is not knowledge of the world. You can't read this in books and understand it. It's something which has to be comprehended via the Ekantik Satpurush. But Bhagwan gives us hints here, saying that therefore one who wishes to attain liberation should do whatever pleases the great Satpurush. Not only that, but in another Vachramrut, Gadara first chapter, 78th Vachramrut, Marad states, to do exactly as the sun says, without harboring any doubts, is the only cause of the Jeev's liberation. Again, to do exactly as the sun says, without harboring any doubts, is the only cause of the Jeev's liberation. Without harboring any doubts, that's the main point. Satyakam did not harbor any doubts. He did not have any questions in his mind. And by that, Marat says that's the only cause of the Jeev's liberation. Look at how firm, look at how much weight Bhagwan has in his words. Look at how much, you can say, a position Maharaj gives his Ekantik Satpurush by giving him the driver's seat, by giving him the reins to countless souls liberation. Look at how much confidence Bhagwan has in his Ekantik Satpurush. So much so that by putting our Dhan Man in Dhan, specifically so, our body, our, our physical body, our mental body, and all our position, possessions in his hands, we become liberated. So then why not? It's just something to think about. If we're here for Bhagwan to please Bhagwan to get his Rajipo, if we're here to give Puja Guruji's Rajipo, then why not? Why not just give up everything? Why not give up our mental status, our physical status, our status of the world why not give up our liking and go in the likings of the Satpurush this is what Satyagam did that's why he was successful the story isn't even finished but I'm telling you because if I tell you that he is successful you would want to you would be intrigued to know how so and how so due to that you'd remember points in the story so that can benefit. I'm reminded of our Puja Guruji. The same kind of intrigue, the same kind of zeal he possessed as Satyakam. How so? Well, one time, it was Puja Dada Guru's wish that Puja Guruji studied and became a great scholar and got a degree in Vedanta Acharya which is the master's in Sanskrit. It's a, not, it's a language. And Puja Guruji also had, at that time, due to Dada Guruji's, Dada Guruji's command, a desire to study, to please him. 
So, Dada Guruji would send Puja Guruji to Kashi, which is a, a city in northern India where that city is centralized all on learning these ancient, ancient scriptures. There's many, many teachers there, and the whole city is based on knowledge. And Guruji would go back and forth and come on vacation, uh, maybe for one or two months, and stay with Dada Guruji. And all the other time, the ten months, he would stay in Gashi and study this language to please his Guru. At that time, Sanskrit, whoever learned Sanskrit was considered to be very, very great. And it was very valued. Even today it's valued, but more so in that time, it was valued even more. And pretty much at one time, Puja Guruji came back to meet Dada Guruji. At that time, Dada Guruji was the Mahant, or the head of uh, Mumbai Mandir. So, one night, Puja Guruji was uh, doing the seva of Dada Guruji, and, and um, Dada Guruji asked, Do you want to go to Kashi? It was just the day before. Puja Guruji's ticket was booked for the train the day after. It was all ready to go. All his bags were packed, and everything. It was all good. And all of a sudden, Dada Guruji asked this question that do you want to go to study in Kashi? Puja Guruji replied, I don't know. I have no clue. You want me to study, that's why I'm going. Meaning Guruji did not have a mind. He just let go of everything. He was he was just free. You can just tell from his answer. And Dada Guruji said, Then leave it. We don't want to study anymore. At that point, Guruji was only one exam away from getting his, you can say, full-on master's degree in Vedanta, the, the field, Vedanta Acharya. He was just one exam away. And if he had gone, he would have came back with the degree. That's how close he was. It takes about, I want to say, six to seven years to attain this degree. And Guruji had studied for that six years, and he was just right there at the edge, at the shore, ready to get off. And Dada Guruji asked this question to him, and Puja Guruji said, I don't know. So Dada Guruji replied, we don't want to go study. Let's let go, let go of it. So right there and then, Puja Guruji let go of his his wish and he completely melted in the words of Dada Guru this is what we want to look at due to that this was just one prasang but there are many prasangs like this due to all this we can see what stiti what spiritual level Puja Guruji is at right now present point just because he followed the words of his Ekantik Satguru, the words of his Guru, exactly, without having a mind. Just like Satyakam Jabali. Not asking questions like, I'm, I'm too young, how do I do this? And I'm here to do this, and why are you making me do this? Just a mere blank. Letting go of everything and just accepting his words. So, continuing on in the story. He found a place where he could find grass and water for these cows and made a hut. Just as his guru had told him, Satyakam began serving the cows. He made sure that each and, each and every cow was provided with grass and water every day in that perfect time so that they would go strong and healthy and would multiply. He protected them from wild animals in the forest. Such a small boy protected 400 plus cows every day. Imagine how brave he was, you can see in this story. Regardless of the season, by the cold, heat, or rain, Satyakam worked day and night to fulfill his Guru's commands. 
determination is seen. Without looking at the weather, he is determined at his goal. Meaning, I told you before, there was going to be obstacles in the way. Yet, he was not phased. His mental status was not phased. And he kept going. Years went by. Years. Just think about it. 400 to 1,000, that's a big number. And this task wouldn't take less than, I don't think, four to five years. Because you have to keep the other ones healthy and then also multiply. So it's a long task. And you can see from that point, his patience. He had extreme patience. He knew that if something had messed up, suppose that one of the cow, cows had a disease and then it spread throughout because all of these cows went as a group to eat, drink water, slept as a group, was contained in an area. If one of, one of them had a disease, what would happen? It would spread throughout and maybe multiple cows would die, 5, 10, 15, 20. What would he do? But he was patient, calm, steady-minded. Due to that, he, is he was successful. Finally, he herded 1,000 cows and brought them back to the ashram where his guru lived, Gautam Rushi. And he showed them the cows. Gautam Rushi knew that he had fulfilled the task, but to also test his wit, his patience, he counted each cow. Another point in trust. Sometimes we feel that our Guru asks us questions regarding things that we already know of or regarding things that are already told to him by us before. Yet, we feel, why is he asking me this? And why is he asking me that? That's not trust. Trust is something which is blind, just like faith. Once you trust someone, then no matter what the situation is, you will always have a firm belief in his words. In the same way, both Satyakam had trust in his Guru that he would be able to fulfill this task and Gautam Rushi had trust in his disciple that he would be able to fulfill this task. Both of them matched and in the end he became successful and what had happened was after Gautam Rushi had counted these cows he became so pleased, so pleased that he did not have to say anything automatically Brahmagdan, automatically Brahmvidya, knowledge of the Atma and knowledge of Bhagwan, slowly was installed into him. He can see this, meaning if someone was physically next to Satyakam, no one would be able to tell. But Satyakam could experience this knowledge that he was seeking for all this time only due to following the commands of his Guru. In the Vatsharmut, Kritada middle chapter, 51st Vatsharmut, Marat says that only one who follows the commands of the Sadhpurush can be said to be under the influence of favorable circumstances. To deviate from those commands is the very definition of adverse circumstances. Therefore, only one who p follows the commands of the Satpurush is behaving as the Atma. Satyakam proved this. How so? Well, when he was taking the cows, he obviously, as mentioned before, was going through a lot of obstacles, keeping the cows safe from wild animals, feeding them every day on a regular basis. But... He was following the commands of his guru, his satpurush. And due to that, he was under the influence of favorable circumstances. You can see that there was no, there were obstacles, but they were not phasing his task at hand. How so? Because he was the, under the commands of his guru. 
also, he did not deviate. He did not go and maybe made an excuse and maybe did something else so that he, he did not deviate, meaning he did not buy another 500 cows to make his task, you know, speed up and then cheat his guru. No. He followed him. And due to that, he attained Brahmavidya. This is a small and short story, but it teaches us, gives us such a strong message that our Guru, our Sat Purush, our Puja Guruji, whatever commands he does, whatever commands he gives out, may it be small or may it be big, it should be carried out without any kind of question, doubt. Doubt comes mentally, always. And due to doubt, the person suffers much. Because once you have trust, once you have developed faith in an ekantik sat purush, then nothing occurs. No doubt, no questions, just kind of like a robot. Just do. In the same way, when we become kind of like a robot, in the path of liberation because we're here to attain Bhagwan, we're here to please our Guruji get his Rajipo then there should be nothing for us but Ha Guruji there should be nothing for us but whatever you say Guruji I will, I'm ready to do even if something that he commands us to do which is completely impossible yet my question to you is that who are we to examine what is possible and what is impossible? That's our mentality because we're still looking from the worldly perspective that this is possible and impossible. If we realize our Guru to be someone that is not physically or human and someone who is beyond, who is a mukt, then he is going to do the task. Why are you worried? He is going to, as as Puja Niskam Swami says, He is going to draw the blueprints to your home. Let Him draw. Why do you have to draw? There is no need for that. Let Him draw and He will draw a home that you will never be able to draw. In the same way, when we completely follow in the Satpurusha's Agna, His words, His commands, we attain Bhagwan, our final and ultimate destination. Saying this, my humble Jay Swami Narayan. Varnivesha Ramaniya Darsanam Mandahasaruchirana Nambujam Pujitam Suranaro Tamir Muda Dharmananda Namaham Vichintai Dharmananda Namaham Vichintai Sri Ganesham Maharajani
Almighty Supreme Lord, our beloved Kansiya Maharaj, Pathmi Kachho, Liberation, Pujya Pat Guruji, Bhagat Ji and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. We are listening some incident from Bhakta Chintamne. Today in Iskudanan Swami described another incident just as we have discussed the last incident what happened in Vododra city how Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself came to came uh, came to a devotee's house and desired to bring his son to Aksar Dham and only and only because of Santo requested Maharaj Maharaj please do not take this son and that's why Maharaj even given up his own desire because of Santo's desire and how he took the another neighbor's sons to his Aksar Dham. Now today the same incident but something different. Today Niskuran and Swami described the another incident and in that incident Niskuran and Swami says Vadi vata kahu ek sari hari jana ne che hit kari ek dvij bapu saravariyo tene samji ne sat sang kariyo joi saachi rit santatani avi pratit potane ghani Vadi sambadi santani vata tene bhangi che manani bhranta. There was a devotee in Vadodara city at the time of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, and after that, first at the time of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, there is no, not a single devotee in the city of Vadodara. But when Muktanan Swami first came there and in the debate with the scholars when Muktanan Swami got a victory over all the scholars from the state uh, from the nation and when Gayakwar Sarkar himself gave the title of Swami Narayano Vijay Tetaram and in this way after that not only that incident but when those who came in contact with Muktan and Swami and who observed the different kinds of behavior of Muktan and Swami, who is totally different like that of the other sadhus. And after that, when they listened to Muktan and Swami's uh, katha and gradually they understand what the satsang is. And after that they become satsangis. Now, Gradually, the satsang grows in the city. In the same way, one dvij, meaning a Brahmin, whose name was Bapu Bhai, he came in contact of some devotees. After that, he also desired to join this fellowship, but he had no kind of information, there is no kind of knowledge, nothing he had. So, when whenever Santo came to Vadodara city, this Bapu Bhai, he always, along with the other devotees, he also engaged in the darshan of Santo and listening Katha from the Santo. First, this Bapu Bhai, when he had a darshan of Santo, while eating, while sleeping, while sitting, while walking, when he observed that this Santo is totally different from the others. This Santo had a totally contact of Bhagwan and they have no any kind of desire to enjoy this worldly sensual pleasure. This Santo have only and only desire to worship Bhagwan and those who come in contact of them, they only pre preach them how to worship Bhagwan. And they only preach about the glory and greatness of Bhagwan. They never say they are the gods. And in the world, on the other side, at the time, those Bawas and those 
so called santo they all speak like that they are the god himself but when this bapu bai he observe that this santo is totally different from the others they have no desires they have no their likings nothing they only obey their master meaning bhagwan swaminarayan's command and nothing else then he had took a goon from santo's life and that's why it is said uh, it is written in uh, in the scripture by niskuran and swami that kaise asant to bahu sara re khara kalyan na karnara re एट लोज गुण कोई ग्रेसे रे ते तो ब्रह्म मोले वास ले रे मीनिंग वन हु फर्स्ट अक्वायर वन हु फर्स्ट हैव विजन टू सी गुडनेस और एनी वर्च्यूज फ्रॉम द लाइफ ऑफ संतो एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस मैरिड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस गुड थिंग ही अक्वायर the blessings of bhagwan and because of these blessings he can be able to understand the real aspect of our, our satsang he can be able to understand who god is who himself is and when he understand this eternal knowledge of one self as well as the god then he can be able to attain final liberation so this brahmin he first observe the santos behavior then he found out many many virtues in the lives of santo and as he had this acquire this goon of santo after that he also desire to attach himself with this santo after that when he loved this santo then he also sit in a katha and listen with proper attention after that gradually listening katha one day after one day one week after one week he acquired the knowledge and he exactly got the ideas of what is satsang and how to become a satsangi and how to attain god this is what he understood by the katha but after katha he became a staunch devotee of bhagwan swami narayan whatever he had any question whatever doubts in his mind whatever kinds of problems or difficulties or doubts or anything in his mind that all were solved by listening katha so the one thing is that whenever we have any kind of question whenever we have a doubts whenever we have any difficulties to understand god's form or understand the scriptures or understand the doubts related to discourses or related to the scriptures at the time we should listen katha from santo or we should directly ask the, such question to santo so that our doubts can be solved now he had no kinds of doubts in his mind because he listened katha many times and that's why after listening katha he become a staunch devotee he had no kind of doubts in his mind not only that but he firmly believed that this this is the manifested form of bhagwan himself the swami narayan bhagwan after acquiring this from faith from belief in the form of bhagwan swami narayan meaning his upasana become very firm now after cultivating such faith in the form of bhagwan swami narayan he acquired the five religious vows that is called a vartman in our satsang and he officially become a satsangi of bhagwan swami narayan now after that as he asked something ab- about how to uh how to behave with the others how to live on this earth ac- uh, according to or bhagwan swami narayan's wishes such kind of question he asked to santo and santo gave him reply and because of that reply 
he one by one accept niyams of satsang and he accept the niyams of satsang not only just as some disciples today accept the niyams and once he uh, give his words to santo or devotees that i would not drink alcohol from this day and still after one week or after one month he again started this is not this babu bai's uh this is not the babu bai's uh, actual behavior or his tendency when he once said i do not eat meat i do not drink an alcohol from this day so he totally stopped he totally renounced all his bad habits from that day and how he behave with his mind just as swami says thayo sat sangi swami no kharo be pravai si paiya karo jhali tek muve navya mele shir kar malai ne khele this is what his inclination in our satsang he become very brave not to fought with others but to fought with his own mind when we are not a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan when we have no such observance of our rules at the time we might be eat outside food we might be engage that is not proper for a human being and when we renounce all this thing at the time after one day or two days or a week or a month those all our bad habits our previously bad habits they all sometime when we see such sin or when we are thinking about those things then once our mind says us to engage in our previous bad habits but at the time we have to fight with our mind that this is not a good thing but how we can fight with such things when we have words of santo we have listened scriptures and we have the knowledge of scriptures or we have listened the katha from santo then we become very brave and we say to our mind that this is not what you say that is this is not possible now i already renounce everything now this babu bai he had the same inclination even he chose to die but not to break any rules he had accepted now once upon a day once upon a time his only son whose name was ram sevak he became very ill and he, because of his illness even though bapu bai uh bapu bai appoint, uh, took an appointment with many doctors and uh, he took ram sevak to many doctors but all medicines didn't work finally this ram sevak's final time meaning the time of death is came but at that time as bapu bai become satsang he was a staunch follower of bhagwan swami narayan and he never after becoming satsang after becoming satsang he never break any rules and regulation of our satsang that's why bhagwan himself come to bring ram sevak into aksardham now divinely Muk- maharaj came to bapu bai's home but maharaj never came alone maharaj came with muktanand swami nityanand swami gopalanand swami and many other santo and some devotees all these santos form and all these devotees form those all forms are divine and according to maharaj wishes all all of the near householders or the passer by all those who at the time in that area they all witness this incident and they all have darshan of maharaj and this santo when bapu bai knew that 
Maharaj himself come to his home. Then he pray to Maharaj. He welcome Maharaj and Santo. And he pray. And then Maharaj, Maharaj says, uh, Bapu Bhai, I specially come here to bring your son Ram Seok into my Aksardham. Then Bapu Bhai with folded his hand. He prayed to Maharaj, Maharaj, this is my good fortune that you himself come to my home to bring my son to your Aksardha. This is very good news for me. I am very pleased because even I have satsang and I have passed this much year in satsang as well as on this world and my son had not passed this much years in the satsang still you become very pleased upon him and you himself took him to your Aksardham. This is the great news, this is the good news for me. And Bapu Bhai requested Maharaj, Maharaj please took him to, his, to your Aksardham. Now as Santo and Maharaj listen this request of this prayer of Bapu Bhai, then all of the Santo they become very pleased upon Bapu Bhai. No doubt Maharaj was also pleased upon Bapu Bhai, but Santo who came with Maharaj, they also become very pleased upon this Bapu Bhai's understanding. Because what happened in Satsang? After becoming Satsangi or even passed many years in the Satsang, when a d d even though the uh, whole the family of uh, whole the family was uh, is a satsang, satsangi of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and when such adverse circumstances happen in that own home if the child if their son their, if that son be, uh, want to become sant or renounce his home and accept her uh, the fold of renunciant life at that time even santo make this proposal uh, to that devotee then the devotee become very angry and he he never become ready to give his son why this is only because of lacking of understanding here even bhagwan himself took uh, himself came to to uh, come to take this ram sevak into his aksardham then bapu bhai himself requested Maharaj, Maharaj, this is the good news for me. This is not because Ram Sevak was not good or Bapu Bhai had no love for Ram Sevak. This is not the thing. Even though Bapu Bhai had too much attachment with Ram Sevak, still, as Maharaj came and Bapu Bhai listened many times in the Katha from Santo that whenever Maharaj came to us, we should give him whatever he like. And that's why Bapu Bhai requested Maharaj, but Santo become pleased upon Bapu Bhai and they requested Maharaj, they prayed to Maharaj, Maharaj, today, please be compensate upon Bapu Bhai and do not bring his own, his only son, Ram Seva, to your Aksardham. We will come later on to come here to Bapu Bhai's home and uh, bring his own uh, only son Ram Sivak into Aksardham but not right now then Maharaj said it's okay and in this way even though Maharaj came divinely with Santo and only with the one mission to bring Ram Sivak into Aksardham still because of Santo's request Maharaj himself he is the all-powerful. Still, he changed his own decision. This is what the main point of this incident. Even though Maharaj decided not to take a person to his Aksardham, and Maharaj himself says, a son like that of Muktan and Swami, even throw that person, then that person definitely reach up to Aksardham without any kind of disturbance or without any kind of difficulties. Even Maharaj decided 
not to take that person into aksharadham still why because maharaj says if i have decided once and my son says or even my son's desire then i have to change my decision this is what the this is the instant written in the scriptures so this is the scriptural principle that on the path of liberation the words of maharaj is not too much greater than the words of bhagwan's ekantik sant maharaj is all powerful he is the supreme almighty still he had given such special power like that of veto power to his sant that he can do whatever sant like This is the incident written in Bhakta Chintamani's 145 chapter the many other incident in the same chapter we will listen from Nishkuran Swami from Bhakta Chintamani next Sunday Ganesham Maharajani <laughs>